So a lot of you wanted insight into my full printing process. And in this video, I'm going to share with you my entire printing workflow in three steps. So to start off with the printer and the printer settings, I'm using a Canon Pixma Pro 10. And this is actually not my printer. It's my brother-in-law's printer and he hasn't been using it for quite some time. And it's kind of just been living at my house. So I decided to finally plug it up and start using it. Now I'm sure when he first bought it, he didn't pay as much as just some of the prices that I'm seeing online, which can be like way up there or just even in the mid range, which is $500. And check out other printers. This isn't like the exact printer you need. You can get great results with much cheaper printers, just different types of printers that Canon sells, that Epson sells. Find a printer that works within your budget and just make it work for you. So when it comes to the actual printer and setting it up so that you can print your photos, make sure that one, the printer is up to the latest firmware on whatever computer device you're using. I print off of a Mac, and so I just made sure that the correct drivers and everything were installed, and I was pretty much good to go from there. But I manage everything through Photoshop, and when you do that, there's settings within Photoshop as you're printing that need to be set in place so that you can kind of just get the best result, whether you're printing color or black and white prints. Inside the print settings, as I'm printing each and every photo, I like to make sure two things are always in place, and that is the color sync and then the quality and media. Under color sync or color matching, I like to make sure that color sync is checked and that it is not referencing the printer for you know the color, but it's referencing the ICC profile. And I'll explain a bit more what that is in the next step. Under quality and media, this is where you'll select your paper type and it may not always match exactly what you have. It doesn't for what I have, so I just pick what is closest to what I have, whether that's a glossy paper or a matte piece of paper. You can also select in this dialog box what type of print you're doing, whether that's a color print or black and white print. So make sure you check that box because I haven't tested it and I don't wanna waste ink or paper testing it out, but make sure you check that box if you're doing black and white prints, leave it unchecked if you're doing color prints. There's so much more that goes into printer and printer settings and how to set up your print, whether that's sizing and getting things in the right positioning for your paper. And I definitely needed to learn this information as well. And there's an absolutely amazing resource on YouTube. Uh, his channel is Jose Rodriguez. Definitely check him out because whatever question you have when it comes to printing, this guy has the answer. If you have an issue with your printer, if you just wanna figure out some obscure little detail about your printer, or just why your colors don't look exactly how you want them to look, or again, sizing, this guy definitely 1000% has the answer on his YouTube channel in extreme depth and detail. So step two is the paper. So if you're just starting off printing at home, I recommend two options for paper. One is just regular printer paper that you would print documents off of. This is to make sure the printer's actually working before you like waste ink trying to print photos and you have issues there, especially if you buy a printer to use, you wanna make sure that your print head is in good shape. And then the second is to just buy cheap paper from your local photo store. This is what I did starting off. I actually bought this ProMaster glossy paper from my local camera store and I messed up at first buying big eight and a half by 11 sheets. I would not recommend starting off with eight and a half by 11. It's absolutely ridiculous and it's too much, especially if you're just trying to do test prints and make sure the printer's working at all. Definitely go with four by six paper. I ended up picking up a pack of four by six paper of this exact one. Again, just to test things out and make sure that they work. Once I was confident and knowing that things worked, I went ahead on Amazon and picked up this Ilford gallery smooth pearl paper um it's kind of like a semi-gloss almost like matte-ish paper it's great i love it i love the texture of the paper i love just the way my photos look on this paper specifically so i definitely like highly recommend this if you just want to start off printing some nice high quality four by six prints now when it comes to the paper and the paper selection, what's really important about this is the ICC profiles, which is something I mentioned earlier. Ilford, once you buy paper, they have instructions that come in the box and everything on how to download 
uh, ICC profiles and install them into your system to use as you're printing. And essentially what an ICC profile does from my understanding is it's essentially like a picture profile for paper. It's telling the printer and your system exactly what type of paper you're using. That way you get the best color and contrast results when you're printing. If you don't use the correct ICC profile, you'll know because the photos, the colors, everything just won't look right. The contrast, the colors, it will look muddy, it will look too saturated or undersaturated, it will look too dark or too bright. So this is something that's very important. It's actually quite easy to install once you know, you know where to put it in the system. It was a little bit of a hassle for me, um, but getting them set up and understanding how they worked makes a world of a difference when it comes to just printing quality photos and getting a result that looks close to what you saw when you were editing the photo on your computer. So step three is selecting the photos to print. Throughout the process of printing my own photos, it's shown me how much I care about the subject matter that I photograph. It's given me inspiration for personal projects and inspired me to stay consistent with my work. It's been fun to go back through my archive and find photos that I used with different cameras, find photos of different events um, or different subject matters that I shot and be able to bring new life to them. As long as I continue to make photos that I like, I'm going to keep printing. So I hope that was helpful for you and gave you a little bit of insight into my printing process. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them below. Also consider checking out my Patreon as it's a way to support me, but also get more insight into my process and things I'm doing with behind the scenes content with my filmmaking and photography life. Thank you for watching.